Hello, everybody. My name is Sergey, and you can also call me Lyorg, wrong side. And uh, today I will be speaking about Lua. And first thing I want to say about Lua is Lua is awesome. Don't you agree with me? Because this is great. And from the first big usage of Lua in game development, in the Green Fandango game, that's a great game of the past, it's proven to be a uh, just an outstanding tool for development of games, for scripting engines, for scripting some uh, complex stuff, and yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, uh, I've been working with a game engine that's called Corona SDK. It's made by Corona Labs company. Uh, I was uh, working at Corona Labs for the uh, entire last year, I was making uh, plugins for them, and Corona uh, uh, SDK uh, has numbers has a huge number of uh, supported platforms. It's uh, mobile and desktop, so it's Android, Windows, iOS, TVOS for Apple, and macOS, and yeah, for all that stuff, you need to uh, <coughs> prepare and make plugins. So that's a lot of work. Hmm. So plugins in Corona can be uh, written in several uh, languages. It can be pure Lua plugins. It can be uh, uh, C++ plugins. Uh, for iOS and all Apple stuff, of course, you would need either Objective C, C++, and uh, Swift. Uh, and for Android, it's only Java plus sometimes you can use C++ as well on Java as well. So what makes plugins so great for game engines is because uh, you don't need to stuff everything into one big component. You can actually uh, uh, spread things out. You can make the engine uh, core very small, very slim, and only extend uh, with uh, the things that you actually need. And that way, your binary size of the game will be not that big. Uh, so, and in game development, binary sizes means a lot because in Android, in iOS, if the game is too big, users won't download it. Hmm. So, uh, uh, although that uh, Corona SDK is a game engine, it's a 2D game engine, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's also used for business applications, and business applications require a lot of third party. Uh, libraries, third-party uh, plugins developed for them, so they can use all sorts of monetization uh, and analytics and yeah, lots of stuff. Corona has, uh, yeah, I don't know how much, how many now uh, plugins, but it's a lot. For uh, <coughs> during the last two years, it's been like a great amount of them being uh, developed. So you can uh, see that the uh, hard work of creating plugins starts with just actually knowing all these languages. So who knows all these languages? Raise your hand. One, yeah, Roberto, it's uh, great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too a little in Swift because uh, Swift is a most recent addition to plugins, and it was not able. Uh, we were not able to make uh, plugins in Swift uh, because they require iOS version eight. So, and we were supporting uh, version six. So, and only now we can use Swift, and and it is great because Objective C. Ah, it's difficult. Some plugins uh, can be written in C and C++ on all platforms because it's kind of uh, cross-platform, but it's not entirely cross-platform, but some plugins can be made uh, so that uh, uh, most of the code is written in C++. So that's a good thing, but it uh, not often works, and uh, if you are dealing with other third-party libraries, it never works. So I've made a few plugins. Uh, this I made by myself, not working for a uh, company. So I started making them uh, e uh, before I started working for Corona Labs. And that's the reason I got hired, because I've made so many of them. And I started with um, uh, QR, QR code and barcode scanner plugin. Uh, you can 
so the result of my work was uh, these two lines of Lua code. Uh, users of Quran SDK can now just require my plugin and call one function uh, with a listener in, as an argument and uh, uh, a view would show up on Android and iOS showing a uh, camera window and you can point it to a uh, QR code and it will be scanned and the function will be called with the message uh, contained in the barcode. And as you can see, it's two lines of code, but uh, behind these two lines of code are hundreds of lines of code in Java and Objective-C and uh, third party other libraries, so that's quite a lot of work. And that's the beauty of Lua and making plugins. So you can make really complex stuff very easily and provide uh, very clean API for developers to use. So they don't need to worry about camera stuff, they don't need to worry about permissions and other uh, ridiculousness of the platforms. They just uh, use what they see and it works. That's really cool. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, Course Scanner plugin was a difficult one, and uh, it was my first plugin that I made, and I started really hard from the, from the beginning, but it w I couldn't do otherwise, because this plugin was very much uh, required by the Corona community. So I started it, and yes, it's the most uh, downloadable of my plugins. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I started with uh, Java, with Android version, and after Lua, I hated Java. Java is, is so awkward, it's so much boilerplate, so much code to do this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I hated it. But then I uh, uh, switched to iOS version and Objective-C, and after that, Java is a really good, quest is a really good language. It's, <laughs> I have no complaints, it's, it's cool. Google, cool. Uh, so after working with Objective-C, yeah, and all this uh, weird stuff that it does, it's all clunky. Uh, uh, it has this really real weird object notations and not classes. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. I hate Objective-C. Uh, so when I uh, started making plugins for Windows uh, using C++, I realized Objective-C is nice. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's good. Because on Windows, uh, uh, despite that Windows is using C and C++, like a normal, good language, but uh, the Windows API is just, you can break your head working with it. It's just, yeah, don't do that. So uh, with Swift, yeah, it will be a much uh, more easier to work with. That's good. So other problems with uh, QR scanner was that on Android uh, you need to supply additional library and uh, I had to find a way to actually uh, load that library inside the plugin and make it work and it was a native library, it was written in, uh, using native uh, C++ and DK of the, of the Android platform and uh, uh, yeah it took a while to get it working properly and reliably. Then uh, there were problems of uh, actually detecting cameras on different Android devices because uh, some devices have no camera, some devices have only uh, rear camera, some only front-facing camera, and some devices have only front-facing camera but they reported to the uh, operation system as a rear camera. And uh, when you work with it, you see uh, the image mirror it because it's all flipping. And yeah, you uh, have to properly um, detect the orientation of the device, orientation of the camera to uh, show the image inside the plugin correctly. Otherwise, the image will be distorted, rotated, or mirrored, and users will complain. It, you just really, uh, when you're not dealing with that sort of stuff, you don't uh, think about that. Uh, when I thought that, yeah, camera, show a ca what could be a difficult in showing a camera feed in the application, but there are a lot of nuances that you can you have to overcome. Uh, the most difficult nuances here, yeah, it's uh, hard, hardware bugs and uh, different. Uh, in Android, there are several uh, API levels, and the camera API is changing and it's evolving, and some uh, firmwares on Android devices use it differently, so it's a lot of 
messed up stuff. But uh, it's getting better now. And uh, uh, each time uh, Google releases its new operation system, uh, uh, it's getting closer when I can get, get rid of the awkward stuff in my code in the, in the plugin and really code with some clean API of the, that Google now provides. Hopefully one day. So just an example of how to use uh, C API for Lua. <clears throat> At some point when you call a Lua function, uh, it uh, respectively calls a C function. For example, here is a get string, it's a C function. And instead of uh, uh, Lua arguments, like, I don't know, strings, variables, other stuff, all you get in the C function is just a Lua state, weird stuff. It's like L and you kind of don't uh, know what to do with L. And L is actually a Lua uh, stack, uh, stack. And you can do a lot of uh, stuff with this. So uh, C API provides you all sorts of functions to do this. Uh, so for example, this is a very simple case. Uh, this function receives one argument, uh, which is a string. And uh, uh, the first argument is because it's number one here. It, if it was number two, it would be a, a second argument for the function. And this way, you can receive many different uh, arguments from the uh, Lua side. Then uh, this function uh, just pushes back uh, that same string that it just acquired on the stack and returns back to the main application. Uh, return one, one here is because we return only one value. So uh, the important thing in Lua stack is that uh, the stack has to be balanced. Uh, how many arguments have you passed? and how many arguments have you pushed onto the stack, you must always correctly calculate uh, the return value. If you mess up and you say push uh, three values and then you call it return two, it will lead to runtime errors or just some uh, unexpected behavior and sometimes such errors are very hard to debug and notice in the code. So, and the same stuff, but it's in uh, Objective-C. So, uh, when working on iOS, you would want to work with native stuff, native strings, because you, uh, almost all the time you want native strings. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> just to convert from uh, C string to an S string, which is Objective-C's one, you have to write down this long line. And yeah, that's troublesome. Thankfully, uh, Apple allows us to use a little cheat, which is at sign. When you uh, place it, it will automatically convert to appropriate object from the Objective-C land. And yeah, that's a little better. It works with NS numbers, but doesn't work with uh, Boolean values because they are integers and, and they get messed up. It's not, uh, not so obvious. So this is kind of... Uh, the simplest uh, plugin that you can make, well, sort of a part of it. So uh, when you want to create, when you want to declare your uh, binary library as a plugin for the Corona engine, you have to uh, export a special symbol. Uh, Corona export here is uh, renamed uh, uh, extern or extern C, depending on if it's uh, C or C++. And uh, uh, inside th that function must be starting with Lua open, and then it must be the name of the module you are creating with all the uh, dots replaced by underscore because you can't uh, use under uh, you can't use dot in, in the function name. So uh, when you call require, that stuff gets uh, executed, and uh, <coughs> you register. Uh, Lua library uh, with such name and uh, with such set of functions. This uh, show function is a normal C function that does like normal stuff or that you want to use. For example, like uh, what I showed earlier, uh, this get string could be something different, uh, something similar. So, and the name, of course, that gets propagated into the module. And then you return it. 
Actually, you can uh, return here whatever you want. You can return here functions, other values. Lua doesn't care. All it cares about is that the stack will be balanced and that you know what you're doing and not just something uh, weird. Uh, or the same stuff on Android. Uh, it's, as you can see, it has much more words, much more some stuff. And yes, yeah, that's one reason why Java is so much boilerplated, but uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, Corona uses uh, Gen Lua package for working with the Lua stack. It's like uh, a wrapper again uh, uh, above the C API, and it's it's quite useful. It's quite good. So uh, here we have to declare a plugin in Java land. In on, on Android, you have to have your package named as a plugin name, and uh, you have to have Lua loader class inside that. Uh, jar uh, libraries that you're going to provide. Uh, it implements Java function, uh, which means it has uh, invoke method, method uh, which is uh, similar to the open uh, function. Inside it, you can do whatever you want, and you register uh, the same, like, uh, like before, a module with one uh, function inside it. And this function is also a wrapper against another class, and that class has uh, not only uh, the function inside it, but also a method that provides, uh, returns a name for that uh, function. So inside show wrapper, it shows you uh, execution and the name of the function. Uh, this is for Objective-C. Uh, this is Objective-C++ because it has class uh, in it, and you can also uh, put uh, these uh, functions inside that list of functions that you provide in the library, and it will work. But the problem with Objective-C++ is that it's messed up, because sometimes you can't use it because you depend on some libraries from third parties, and uh, sometimes they get incompatible with Objective-C++. You can't compile, compile your plugin. so. A rule of thumb is that you have to uh, not use Objective-C++ for plugins and really stick to Objective-C. But Objective-C is different. It doesn't have classes. It only has uh, this weird implementation and interface stuff uh, like this. So uh, this is Objective-C. Now we get rid of Objective-C++. And instead of class, we have interface, which is an S object, and we have implementation with uh, two functions inside it. It's open and show. It, this is uh, inside here is the actual code that you want to execute when your plugin uh, gets required and uh, show function gets called. But you can't just use this function show. You have to have uh, a normal C function uh, that will call your objects. Uh, show function. Uh, only uh, with such uh, wrapper inside it, you can actually get it to work. And uh, I've tried many uh, solutions how to uh, make plugins, and this one is the most straightforward. Is uh, uh, it has less uh, the least boilerplate, and yeah, it works fine. Hmm. So when you provide API <coughs> uh, for your plugin, uh, you uh, say that we have this and these functions, and you call you can call them this and that way. Uh, <coughs> uh, from the beginning, functions in Lua don't have uh, named arguments, so you can only have them uh, like in series, and this is fine for small stuff. But when your plugin gets more and more complex you really want to start having named functions, uh, named arguments, because there are many optional parameters, and uh, uh, you, do, you always forget which is what, which is where, and uh, when you uh, wrote something stuff, you, after a few years, you look at it, and you don't remember what the parameters are, and you always have to uh, go to the documentation. With named arguments, you uh, have the documentations with you, and it's much more obvious way. Uh, I like to uh, have uh, parentheses in this way and uh, omit them in this way when I use table as a container for the named arguments. 
It, I think it looks prettier. Uh, who, raise your hand if you don't like it this way, if you always put uh, parentheses. One, two, three, four, five. Robeta likes it, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, missing a comma? You like comma here, really? Yeah. Who, who likes oh. comma here? <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, actually, more people. No, I don't understand you, but for me, the less uh, symbols in the code, the better. Well, maybe. Uh, they also make all this if when you swap the lines, just delete one and put it back. <laughs> Code it the right way from the first time, like we all do. Uh, yeah, I understand. And you, when you copy pasting, you don't have to worry about that comma. But I don't like it. So. Uh, so when you have. Uh, a few arguments, parsing these arguments in native C uh, is uh, not that difficult, like you call to string, to boolean, and you deal with it. But when you have so much options, it becomes really, really hard to uh, parse. So when I, so I quickly realized, so when I want to uh, work on plugins, I have to, um, make some automatic approach to parsing and uh, checking arguments that my uh, users are passing to the plugins. Uh, first thing is to get the argument count. And uh, one thing that I, I noticed that I didn't think before is that you actually have to check for zero arguments as well. So if you uh, have a function that uh, receives no arguments, but in Lua some uh, people actually put some arguments in it, that's actually, uh, in most cases, it's fine because it will ignore it. But from the uh, code cleanness, it's bad because something went wrong, obviously. And you have to tell the user that, yeah, you are messing up the code, so fix it somehow. So checking the count of arguments is you call get top, and then you uh, compare it with what you actually need. So for parsing arguments, I have developed uh, in Java and uh, Objective-C uh, helper classes, and this is in Java, which uh, <coughs> uh, get, uh, describes all the parameters that go into a function call inside my plugin. Uh, this is taken from the text-to-speech uh, plugin, which g generates uh, speech uh, wave, and uh, you can control many parameters, uh, like voice, uh, female, male, uh, language, uh, English, Russian, uh, volume, speed. You can also supply a file name if you want to save it somewhere. And uh, uh, all the values, uh, I say what type they are. They are string, Lua numbers, light user data for pointers, uh, listeners. Listeners is a normal function uh, that receives uh, as an argument an event table. A listener can also be uh, not a function, but a table with, a, uh, with such a function inside it. So that's why it's function and not, that's why it's listener and not function. Hmm. And uh, when you actually want to get the actual data, uh, in my plugins, uh, I have another class that's table. Uh, I provide to the table the Lua stack and the uh, position of the my parameters, where they're located on the stack, and they parse them according to the defined scheme. So when uh, the table is parsed, I can easily get all what I need, either string, uh, double, I can also get it, uh, say it, get integer, I can uh, provide default values, uh, and I can, so I can also say, for example, not get string, but get string not no uh, to uh, de uh, to describe that this parameter is required. So if it's get string not null and language is uh, missing from the call, I can raise an error to the user and say, hey, you forgot to include this parameter and fix your code. So this is really helpful. And uh, notice this, how many parameters there are and how much 
uh, code uh, do I have here? So one parameter, one line of code. And I want to show you quickly an example of something else. This is um, a source code of another plugin that's made not by me, but by other company. I want to zoom in a little. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, this is this is the library that has uh, all sorts of uh, functions inside it. So they're using Objective C++ uh, with lots of boilerplate. And uh, so here's the main uh, call for the function of the plugin show. And uh, here they check in the number of arguments. And here they check in uh, all the uh, stuff that they need, like parameters. Uh, all different, like you see, they get get field for uh, parsing tables, popping it, and if you forget one of these puppies, uh, you will mess up your uh, stack and it will not work. So as you can see, that's lots and lots and lots of code just to get the arguments parsed. And if I continued in this way, it would not work for me, so I had to do what I did with my stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, showing you all the stuff that uh, scheme can describe. So it's a string, a number, boolean. Number value is either a string uh, that has all, all digits in it or that is convertible to a number or just a plain old number. Function byte array is also a lower string, but they're treated differently in Objective-C and Java. In Java, it's an uh, actual array of bytes. In Objective-C, it's NS data object, so they're different. And uh, one of beauties of my approach is that I can also can check for arrays and tables and nested tables. So here I have uh, a table array uh, with number elements in them. So when I uh, put here array dot pawn sign, pawn means all the elements in them. And I say in here in this scheme that uh, all my uh, elements of the array uh, must be numbers. Another table options has uh, inner elements like incomplete, constant, and they are also denoted with a dot, like would you call them in the Lua. Uh, so it's very easy to write them. If I would do this uh, in a uh, straightforward approach with uh, pure C API, it would be a lot of code just to get into this. Uh, for example, into this object, some object, because you would need to you would need to get uh, the first uh, table, then nested table, then the nested table of the nested table, and then the object that you want to get. So that's a lot of stuff to do, and really, really hard. Uh, so uh, how it works behind the scenes, that uh, the parsing, is that I create uh, an S dictionary container or uh, Java hash table, and according to the scheme, I put inside it all the elements and their paths inside the uh, Lua table uh, into that uh, container. And when I, uh, the problem here is that neither hash table or an S dictionary support pr uh, primitive types like uh, plain integers, plain booleans, they all need to have uh, objects like an S number, like uh, integer with capital I for Java, and I need to convert back and forth them so I can use them. And this is a simple exemption of the string uh, in Objective-C, so I put uh, here self get path uh, is uh, getting me a raw object inside the uh, NS dictionary that was parsed, and then I'm checking, uh, because it's a get string, I actually check uh, if this object is an S string. If it's so, yeah, then, then it's fine. So we, I return what I, uh, what I want. If it's not, so uh, I just saved a crash because I didn't convert to an S string an object that wasn't an S string. Uh, but for some objects, it's not so straightforward. Bec for example, for Booleans, uh, Objective-C doesn't have a dedicated 
uh, Boolean uh, object. They have an S number that can be uh, created from Booleans. And it is very awkward to check if it was created this way. And uh, there is not only one way, but two ways. And they uh, work differently depending on the version of the iOS that you are using. And so I have to have here a small uh, or uh, operator. So if it, it's either this or this. And then it works. And here's, for example, also a piece of code from my uh, text-to-speech uh, plugin. So what I usually do is that I have a simple Lua uh, cheat sheet of how I call my function. So it's a speak with the text in it and optional parameters. And then I check uh, the number of arguments. Uh, then I provide some defaults. And then I uh, define a scheme that I want to parse the table with. And then I'm uh, parsing them with all little effort. And it works really, really good for me and for all my plugins. So uh, it's OK to uh, receive tables now. And I also uh, needed a way to push back tables to Lua land from hash tables and NS dictionaries. So I also wrote some piece of code that converted all standard uh, Java objects or uh, Objective-C objects back to the Lua equivalent. It was not without problems. For example, uh, if you want to convert user data or something uh, kneelable, you have to have some special logic for this. Uh, so, yeah, it's much more simpler to uh, to put everything into a hash table in Java and uh, uh, just uh, convert the entire hash table into one big Lua table on the stack and get it on with, uh, without worrying about anything. Um, uh, if I need, uh, if some object that I need to return may be uh, null, uh, I also have another. Uh, a function that uh, specifically checks if the object is null. Uh, I could uh, always only use this function instead of direct equivalent of table put, but this way I would lose information about uh, what stuff can be nullable and what not in my code. So it's important to distinguish between them in a way. Mm -hmm. Another problem is that Corona uses Lua 5.1, and uh, there's no 64-bit uh, integer uh, data type yet. So uh, sometimes when I receive from third-party libraries values that are 64 bits, I need to convert them back to either Lua numbers and might be losing precision, or I need to convert them to string. So it's all debatable and uh, it really comes to a specific use case of the scenario. So uh, we could move to 5.3, but it requires a lot of porting because uh, the Lua version in Corona is slightly different uh, to meet certain requirements. And yeah, it, it's not going to happen soon. So uh, for now, uh, if it's a unique timestamp or something, <coughs> Very important, I convert it to string. If not, convert it to number. When I first started working at Corona Labs, one of my first tasks uh, turned out to be uh, uh, migrating our old build system for Java plugins from Ant to Gradle, and uh, also to get support for Android Studio. Uh, as, uh, as a plugin developer, as I grew, I had uh, much more plugins to work on. And uh, using Ant, I couldn't use Android Studio uh, because of the building process. And Android Studio was very 
crucial in this process because it helps a lot with code analysis, with automatic building and uh, sort of all sorts of stuff. So uh, moving back to uh, moving to Gradle helped really a lot in plugin development. Uh, before that, when I just started with the QR scanner uh, plugin, I had to b uh, build it using Ant, and it was much harder than it could have been. Also, Gradle provides you with the ability to include uh, modern libra libraries that are not just jars, but AARs, which are more uh, complex. <coughs> So another thing uh, with, when making plugins is the source control and like uh, GitHub or Mercurial, Bitbucket, because when you, uh, a couple times when I was upgrading my code to meet new uh, requirements from Google or if there are some uh, new library update was made, I had to um, uh, migrate my plugin code and a uh, few times it didn't went well and I had to roll back, otherwise I would lose lots of stuff. Also community uh, feedback and is very important because users is uh, free testing. So you, uh, uh, what I sometimes do uh, when I don't have a device, for example, the latest iPhone or the latest Android, I make some changes. I push them to the server and I see if I get any complaints about from the user that something does, doesn't work. If it works, uh, no complaints. If it doesn't, I quickly fix it and nobody notices. Uh, there are lots of uh, platform specifics, like for Android, there are many Android versions, Android APIs that you, need, you have to adapt to, as well as for iOS, the same stuff. and. Uh, Mm. You also have to be constantly checking for that. That's difficult. Uh, also, FAT libraries is when uh, iOS has a compiled version of libraries for both uh, x86 platform and ARM platform, and sometimes different ARM platforms because there are several uh, families of the ARM processors and they get uh, to a lot of s space. They take a lot of disk space. So I have to, uh, for example, for Google Play, Play Game Services library, I uh, get binaries from Google. I strip them apart using uh, command line tools like LiPo or IR, and I uh, delete all the not needed stuff. And also I uh, have to hack it uh, because uh, when I'm compiling, sometimes there are dupl uh, duplicate symbols uh, in the code for iOS. Uh, you know that in iOS, uh, in Objective-C, everything that you write is a symbol, and there's no way to namespace them. They all get clunked into one area. So uh, plugin developers and library develop developers, they often uh, uh, have prefixes for their libraries. In my case, uh, that is, uh, for example, if I have a uh, class uh, that is, I don't know, uh, scanner, for example, uh, it really uh, should be a plugin uh, QR scanner underscore scanner. And if you have many such classes, uh, all your code looks much bigger than it should be, uh, and it's not uh, good. So uh, in Xcode, I discovered a ability to quickly rename all the classes that I need to rename uh, uh, during the build process. That helped to reduce the code size to normal <coughs> uh, values. So another problem on Android is DEX limit. Uh, DEX is also something, some form of compiled uh, Java code, and it has a limit on how many uh, methods and classes it can hold inside it. Uh, it can only hold uh, 65,000 plus uh, methods. And with many plugins, when you compile uh, application with many, many plugins, you get to that limit very quickly. So uh, at Corona, uh, people uh, had to have uh, multi-dex support. Uh, it's when Android packages your application with uh, several dex files to increase that limit. And without uh, Gradle support and Android Studio, that wouldn't be possible. So again, 
uh, duplicate symbols also can happen uh, in Java when you have uh, several classes with, uh, with the same package name and you can uh, you should also rip them apart and rename it's a lot of work when you're dealing with such sorts of, with uh, such sort of stuff hmm. maintenance uh, is hard uh, because as I said when Google and Apple release their new operation system they introduce new bugs and I always constantly have to fight them I need to uh, make workarounds and uh, check uh, stuff uh, on the devices it's uh, it's difficult uh, when uh, creating API and, and plugins so you really have to think what you're actually giving to the community to users you have to think about uh, your function names uh, what they sound like what the parameters are and uh, uh, I've developed a few rules for myself for making plugins is so when uh, this is a function and if it is if it uh, receives more than one argument make it table parameters so uh, because it's eventually you would want to maybe extend the function and if it was just uh, simple arguments you would uh, make a breaking change in your plugin it's, and it's not good so always stick to table arguments when possible uh, booleans uh <coughs> when you're having uh, boolean parameters make sure that the default value for them is false uh, if it doesn't sound like false, for example, uh, a boolean that determines uh, if uh, the player is a winner, you can be a, you can say is winner equals false, uh, but uh, false should be default. Uh, it should be uniform. So you have to rename uh, your uh, argument. So instead of is winner, you can say uh, is loser and you can say it true when it's actually so happens and if it's false you just don't include it in the function call uh, so uniform calls yes yeah, so when you're having lots of plugins with lots of functions uh, you need to make sure that they all behave uh, similarly uh, and uh, when people are using your plugins and libraries they uh, start to expect certain things and um, Mm, they don't have to switch their thinking when they are dealing with different plugins so that's uh, that's crucial uh, another example for Google Play game services library it's a very big one it has lots of uh, sub modules for multiplayer for leaderboards for um, for saved data to the cloud and uh, if it was all in one namespace like uh, gpgs dot uh, uh, create leaderboard uh, dot submit scores dot um, create multiplayer room it would be a, a lot of functions in one namespace and it's uh, it's not it's not great what I did is that I uh, uh, changed it to sub modules so it became gpgs dot uh, leaderboards dot submit or show or whatever that I want and uh, other sub module for other stuff uh, using Lua and uh, this way repackaging APIs from one form to another also helps to uh, solve uh, issues that Google has or some other uh, library provider for example Google uh, don't have uniform API for their sub module but when I convert uh, their libraries to Lua I can fix that and in my version all the stuff now looks pretty and uh, it's uh, cleaner and un more understandable so it's more uniform even uh, than the original that's a nice stuff also a uh, uh, good example is a vibrator plugin uh, there's a, uh, it's it's uh, initially from Android and you can vibrate for a, uh, a set amount of time like five seconds one second and recently they introduced this on uh, iOS and iPhones but they don't uh, allow you to vibrate for the set amount of time only once uh, with different intention and yeah you have like the same hardware and it's uh, working differently and in Lua I am fixing it uh, so it behaves the same way so when I have uh, so I made the plugin this way on objective C is that it fixing it and it allows you to vibrate for as, as long as you want it, it was nice thing another good thing is uh, for example when you're working with hardware like NFC and Bluetooth uh, that work 
under under the hood the same way because of the same hardware. So uh, it was uh, initially it becomes becomes same hardware, different uh, gluing logic, and the same Lua API. And because of the same hardware, uh, Lua API uh, becomes also the same, uh, much easier. Uh, sometimes when uh, third party providers make their libraries that they need to convert to plugins. Uh, they provide different API for iOS and for Java, and sometimes it's hard to make them the same on the lower level on the different platforms. So that's also another challenge. Another, uh, when, I, uh, when you return objects from the plugin, make sure that they accept uh, colon notation for uh, method calls. That way a user knows that it's actually uh, an object and not something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in the code, uh, in the C API, uh, you have uh, this uh, constant, which is, uh, who knows what is it, except Roberta. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it defines a type of a table. So uh, there's Lua T string, Lua T number, uh, Lua T user data, and one is Lua T table. I just, when I uh, find it in the code, I always giggle a little and find it funny because, come on, T table, a table with a T on it, that I find it's funny. Okay, thank you. This is all for my talk. Thank you, thank you. Questions, please? Does your system accept uh, alternating uh, types, parameters? Uh, it accepts all the Lua parameters that it should accept. So you, uh, I can accept uh, light user data, user data, numbers, what, what booleans. Argument A may be number or string. Uh, that's a bad design choice. No. So, yeah. And what is it is a table for JSON where for example, the value may be ta table or string or number? Uh, uh, for if I really find a use case for it that really works for my plugin, I make an exception in the scheme and I add this uh, parameter, but I try not to uh, do this do this because uh, a clean API should be one thing for one type of argument. Uh, mixing them is not that good. Except for nil, obviously. Yeah. Uh, where did I have? Well, yeah. For example, I have uh, numeric. It's like a uh, compound from a number and string. So as this uh, here it works. So I use it. Or for example, for the listener, which is a, a special kind of function or a table. So when when it's reasonable, uh, of course I add some extension for this. Okay. Thank you. Next question, please. Are you going to make a <coughs> next step in your, <laughs> your moving? I mean uh, to go from this to code generation in Lua and quit uh, writing uh, Macarona code in Java or C++ or something. This is just spaghetti. Uh, spaghetti <laughs> and just generate it. Yeah, maybe sometime in the future, but not. It was actually so our way, I think. <laughs> Macaroni yeah. is a nice dessert in English. In English, English it's spaghetti. Code so generation is, is everything. It's not spaghetti? No. Next question, please. Before it's not a cooking conference. <laughs> it's a tea conference. <laughs> tea, at least not coffee. question about uh, Corona, uh, it, uh, does it compile into web? Uh, it could, uh, because there's a um, um, library that let you run uh, Lua code inside browser in JavaScript, but uh, making plugins for web browser is a hell lot of work, so no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have you take uh, took a look at default engine? Yeah, I took and it, they have much less plugins, obviously. Next question, please. 
No? 